listening to the Real Life Church Podcast. To learn more about Real Life Church, including our gathering times in Yuma, Arizona, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com. Today's talk comes from Pastor Bob Van Horn. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Real Life Church. I'm glad you're with us today. If you're an old timer, welcome back. If this is your first time, I got great news for you. You're on the beginning of a brand new teaching series. We're going to be looking at the life of Jonah. Everybody's heard of Jonah, and you might even know most of his story, but I'm pretty sure you don't know the entire story. Jonah is such a relevant book for us. Everybody asks the question, what is God's will for my life? When God reveals that to you, you have a choice. You're either going to go do it or you're not. And if you don't do it, you never know what might happen to you. We all have an opportunity to do what God wants us to do, and we have the opportunity not to. Jonah is a great look at that, and we're going to see that over the next four weeks. Now, Jonah's a small little book in the Old Testament, right near the end of it. Now, as we get into this, there's a few things I want you to know. Jonah is a prophet. A prophet is someone who spoke on behalf of God. Remembering back then, they didn't have a Bible. And so God used people to communicate what he wanted to say to the people. Jonah's mission was to tell the people they were going in the wrong direction. That's what a lot of the prophets did. Now, also, Jonah's book is a book of wisdom, all right? And this is good for us because it tells us that we ought to do God's will, we ought to be in obedience to God, and there's great blessing that happens when we do. And on the other hand, when we know what God's will is and we choose not to do it, guess what? God's gonna use whatever circumstances he can to help us to turn back to him. I hope over the next four weeks, you're going to get some wisdom from this book. Chapter one. And instead of me just reading you the whole chapter, there's about six different things I want you to know before we get into kind of what we're talking about. And the very first one is Jonah is instructed to go to the city of Nineveh. The people of Nineveh were definitely going in the wrong direction, and God wanted them to turn back to him, so he was going to send the prophet Jonah to give him that message, either get right, Nineveh, or get judged. And that was the message, except Jonah didn't want to go there. As a matter of fact, this is the whole friction in the book. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. Jonah wanted God to basically destroy Nineveh completely. And that's kind of an important point in our life, that sometimes God's will for our life isn't exactly what you want it to be. It's not what you expected or what you had hoped it to be. It doesn't always make you happy, but it's still God's will for your life. So the next thing I want you to get about this is God gives Jonah some detailed instruction. He says, I want you to go east by land to Nineveh. You get it? East by land to Nineveh. You know what Jonah does? The exact opposite. He goes west by sea to Tarsus. That's not exactly what God said to do. Matter of fact, Jonah's doing what Jonah wants to do instead of what God wants him to do. And that's kind of relevant for us sometimes, because just like when God reveals his will to us, we go in the opposite direction of God. We run from God. Sometimes that's with a life decision, or I'm just going to miss the mark by a little bit. The other thing from Jonah's life that's important for us to remember is that the Lord sent a violent storm against the ship that Jonah is on. God sends a storm to stop him. And you know what's interesting about this is during this storm, do you know what Jonah is doing? Everybody else is running around this ship like they're going to die. He's sleeping. In the midst of this, he's oblivious to the storm. And isn't that kind of true also for us? That when we're 
outside of God's will, we're oblivious to it, but everyone else around us knows that there's some issue. There's some truth to that, right? Jonah is about to learn a lesson about the consequences of disobedience. Jonah doesn't come clean. He doesn't confess. But what he does tell the sailors is he says, you know what, this whole storm is my fault. And if you would just throw me overboard, the storm is going to go away. If you're the sailors on the ship at this point, and that guy just admitted that he's the reason for the storm that you're going through, what would you do? You're right. Throw him overboard because they feel like they're about to die. And they do. That leads me to the last thing that I want you to understand about this before we kind of dive into chapter one. The Lord arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah. This wasn't an accident. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't luck. This was Jonah running from God and God orchestrating circumstances to get Jonah back on the right track. God's will for Jonah was much bigger than Jonah. And that's true in your life too. Whatever God has that's out there for you is bigger than you. And you are part of a bigger story than just your own. You're part of God's story. You're a part of God's kingdom and he wants to use you. And yet so many of us run from God. I get asked this all the time. Pastor Bob, do you really believe that a great fish actually swallowed Jonah and he was in the belly of a fish for three days? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't believe this is an allegory. I don't believe this is a parable. I don't believe this is an illustration. If God can create whatever he wants to create and do whatever he wants to do and puts the cosmos in the cosmos and everything hangs in delicate balance and we're all here, if he wants to teach you a lesson, can I live in the belly of a fish for three days? With God's help, you can do just about anything. And God can orchestrate anything. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But I believe it. And I believe it because it's a lesson in Jonah's life that God wants to teach him. And it's a lesson in our life that God wants to teach us. Let's jump into chapter one really quick. We need to understand God's will for our life. The very first thing in chapter one that I want you to see that God does have a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. He has a will for your life. He has a desire, a plan, and a purpose for your life. And he wants you to get it. God had a will for Jonah's life. And it says it right here in chapter one. It says in chapter one, the Lord gave this message to Jonah. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked the people are. That's it right there. That's the direction. That's the plan for Jonah's life. He has one for you too. What is God's plan for your life? Maybe it is in your marriage. Maybe it's in finances. Maybe it's in your work. What is God's plan for your life? What is his direction for your life? And I'm going to tell you, his plan for your life is better than your plan. Or are you going to be just like Jonah and stick with your plan and do your own thing? One of the things I want you to get through this whole series is when we talk about God's will and direction. I think all of us would choose God's will if we could see our life from God's perspective. Because see, God's perspective is different than ours. He sees our past. He sees our future. He sees everything around us, everything as it could be. And he wants the absolute best for every one of us. You would choose God's direction if you could see your life from God's perspective. The problem is, is we don't. Maybe we need to pray that God would open our eyes to his perspective, that his plans are always best. Matter of fact, in Psalm 32, it says that God will guide us along the best pathway for our life. He's going to advise us and he's going to watch over us. That's what God's word says. I believe that. God has a plan that's better than your plan. We also have to trust God that his plan is best for us, even if it leads us into uncomfortable circumstances that we'd rather not be in, like going to Nineveh, to your sworn enemies, to tell them to get your act together or God is going to judge you. 
Jonah didn't want to do that, and maybe you wouldn't want to do it either, but it's best for Jonah to do it. And the bigger picture is it's best for Nineveh if Jonah goes and gives that message and Nineveh does repent. See, you're part of a bigger plan that you just don't realize. You're seeing it only from your perspective. The next thing I want you to see from chapter one that's so huge is that we have to admit this, that we constantly fight against God's will. If God's will is a bullseye on a dartboard, it's very small, right? You remember about that big is the bullseye on a dartboard. And when you're playing darts and you throw and you miss the bullseye, it doesn't matter if you miss it by this much or that much, you miss. The problem is, is we've compromised. I almost was there and we call it good enough, but we did not hit the bullseye. Right there in chapter one, verse three, it says that Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship, even though he was told to go by land, he found a ship leaving for Tarsus, which is the opposite direction of Nineveh. He bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from what the Lord was telling him to do. We have to admit that that's a tendency that all of us have. It's not natural to follow after God. Matter of fact, it goes against our natural instinct. It goes against everything because everything godly pushes against us. He was supposed to go by land and he went by sea. He was supposed to go east and he ended up going west. He did the exact opposite of what he was told to do because he was unable to see God's perspective. He didn't understand what God wanted him to do. And it's the same thing that happens to us. We do have a nature, by the way, that fights against God. It's always going to fight against God because what does the Bible say? We're, we're sinners, right? Paul said that. We know that verse. It says that we constantly miss the mark of God in our life, sometimes by a little bit, but we still miss, right? Or sometimes it's a lot and we go in the opposite direction. It's a miss no matter what you say. When we do that, we're going to get the opposite results of what God intended. So let me ask you the question. Would you admit that there's an area in your life? I think there's areas in all of our life where we're missing the mark of what God wants us to do. Let's get back to Jonah for just a second. I said earlier that Jonah was a prophet, that he spoke on behalf of God. I think this is a great reminder that even spiritual people like you, guess what? None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And I think it's important that God is calling out Jonah right now, and he might be calling you out, and he might even be calling me out. And then what does God do? He sends a storm into Jonah's life. He sends a big fish, not because he was mad at Jonah, not because he was trying to punish Jonah, it was because he loved Jonah and he wanted Jonah to fulfill his purpose in his life. So there are a couple things I just wanna say. First of all, God's gonna use predicaments in your life, circumstances in your life to turn you back to him. That's important. He tries to get your attention. He tried to get Jonah's and he'll try to get yours. The second thing is, is a lot of times that he'll use people. He'll put people in your path. There were sailors that were aboard the ship. They were trying to tell Jonah, hey, we're in trouble. What if Jonah had just stopped and said, you know what? I've messed up. I need to tell God that I'm sorry and I need to repent of this. And then the, maybe the storm would have gone away. I think the storm would have gone away, but he didn't. Matter of fact, Jonah didn't pray either. You know why he didn't pray about the circumstances? At least it's not recorded that he prayed. He didn't want to talk to God kind of like all of us when we're rebelling against God's will and God's direction for our life. We don't want to talk to God because we're afraid of what God might tell us. We're afraid of what God might say. Well, we might even be afraid that God would get after us a little bit. The last thing and the hardest part about this is, you know, he uses prayer and he uses predicaments, he uses people, and he also uses what we don't want to hear, pain. Jonah ignored God. 
Maybe you've ignored God. And then God orchestrated a big fish. And I'm going to tell you something. God loves you enough to orchestrate something in your life that's going to cause you to be redirected back to him because he loves you. He wants you because he sees your life from a different perspective. He sees the potential in you, and he sees what you could do in him. And so he tries to help you to get back to him. C.S. Lewis once said that pain is a megaphone to get our attention. I agree with that. That sometimes God has to bring pain in our life that we might draw back towards him. You might say that Jonah is going to have a serious redirection here. So, is God trying to redirect you today? Are you going to listen to him, or does the pain have to get worse? I want you right now to avoid the unnecessary storm. I want you to avoid the unnecessary big fish that God might bring in your life. And I want you to accept God's love to return back to him. Maybe you do feel like you're in the belly of a fish right now and that really hurts. I'm going to tell you something. Respond to that pain right now. Are you being disobedient to God's will or his direction or his plan for your life? Then turn back to him. Trust him. We're going to see over the next few weeks, there's some consequences in Jonah's life for not following after God's will. And I'm going to tell you, the consequences that Jonah faced are the same consequences that you and I fit when we're outside of God's will. I hope you're getting something already from this. I hope that you're already seeing, wow, Jonah is just more than just a fish story. Jonah's a real life story. And it's a real life story for him. And it was a real life story, I hope, for you that I would want you to try to avoid. Admit it right now. Acknowledge it right now. Escape that redirection that God is trying to get your attention and return to him. Go back to him and admit that you've messed up. And you're ready to follow it is whatever he has for you. If you're listening right now and you're not a Christian, your very first step is, well, not returning to God, it's going to God. If you don't know him and you don't know him as Savior, look, acknowledge that. God, I don't know you. God, I'm looking for you. Jesus died on a cross for you so that you could be forgiven of your sins and you could be in a right relationship with Almighty God. And that's where you begin. So next time when we meet, when we get together our second installment in the book of Jonah, we're going to look at the high price we pay when we don't follow through with what God asks us to do. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. We have very quickly looked at the first chapter in the book of Jonah. And Lord, we're already seeing as we kind of open it up how real and relevant this is to our life. God, I can admit, I think all of us can admit that you do have a perfect will for our life. And a lot of times, well, we just miss the mark. Sometimes by a little bit, sometimes we're even going in the opposite direction. Lord, I would rather hit the bullseye than have to be swallowed by whatever circumstances there are to cause me pain in order to return. God, I thank you that you're a God that loves me enough to even think to do that to cause me pain, that I might come back to your way and to your will. So God, I pray for those that are listening today. God, I pray for those that maybe aren't even followers of Jesus today, that they would give their heart and life over to you, even right now, by confessing their sin. And for the rest, Father, that are listening, I pray, God, that you would use Jonah to remind us of your will for our life and our willful obedience to your will. God, it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for listening. I really appreciate you following. Again, God bless you, and I'll see you back next time. If you were encouraged by today's talk, be sure to rate us and hit subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you stream your podcasts. To experience other talks, videos, and live gatherings, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com or download the Real Life Church app. 
and again, thanks for listening to the Real Life Church Podcast.